choose not to. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? All right? It's really great to see everybody again, right? Yeah. All of us, the soldiers that have been here three nights in a yeah. row, right? Yeah. Important <laughs> spiritually, right? I'm just grateful that I'm here to get any, anything from a portion of God's Word. Amen? Amen. So we're just grateful that we can have this opportunity. So the Holy Spirit is going to be taken over, so I please ask you to respect that, be attentive to it, and try not to distract anybody or get them out of the Spirit tonight. So please be aware of that. All right, so we're going to start in that scripture on the board there, Romans chapter 10. Please turn there. We're going to start there tonight. I have a scripture for us too. The Lord wrote on my heart to share with you all, which I will. up first 10 minutes. Back up a little bit. Just, just a little bit. And we're going to start with verse 8. In fact, it says, the message is very close in hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is, in, it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is openly declaring your faith that you are saved. In verse 11, as the scriptures tell us, Anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Verse 12, Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Verse 15. And how, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Amen? Amen. So how are we going to ever know about Christ unless someone tells us about Christ? How are we, if we openly declare, it says, with our, in our, if we believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, but there's another thing that says there, that God raised him from the dead. There's another one there that a lot of people are not sure they believe that. Well, how can somebody get raised from the dead? But that is a condition. We have to believe that he rose from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. Amen? So we have to believe in our heart. What do you mean believe in our heart? Well, first we have to hear it, and then we believe it with our, heart, our whole heart, our whole core. We believe it wholeheartedly that that is the truth. Amen? Amen? And that's what saves us, because it's the truth that sets us free. And once we believe that, the Holy Spirit comes into us, and then it causes us to want, uh, have a desire to get to know God better and better. Amen? Right. Once the Holy Spirit comes in, we're sealed, and that's it. You can't get kicked out of this family. Amen? Amen. Right? It's not dependent on our, on our performance. It depends on our faith. Amen? And thank God for that. Because if it depended on our performance to get to heaven, guess what? None of us are going to make it. Because we all fall short of God's glory. Amen? Amen? So that's why it's so understandable. We really love the Lord Jesus, what He did for us. He paid our sin debt in full. Other than that, we'd never be able to make it there. Amen? Amen? So that's why we have to understand that. But somebody has to tell you about that. And guess who God called to do that in this ministry? <laughs> Me. And I tell you about that, and then I help you understand and develop a healthy relationship with God. Amen? Amen. But this is just a supplement. This isn't... This isn't all there is to it, okay? I'm just here to enhance your faith in your walk with the Lord, amen? That's beautiful scripture. Now I got one for us. Go to um, 2 Timothy chapter 4.
No, it's not two tickets for Jeff. I think it's three. My phone just three. Let me make sure. Scripture is inspired by God. All Scripture means from what? Genesis to Revelation. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. All Scripture. Not just the New Testament, not just John, not just Romans, the whole Bible. Amen? amen. Is inspired by God. And why is it useful? It says that it's, it, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful. What is it useful to do? To teach us what is true. Okay, the Bible is truth. Okay, and what else is it for us to do? To make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. The Bible shows us what's wrong in our lives, not what's right with our lives. Amen. The only thing that makes our lives right is our belief in Jesus. Amen. amen. Then we start to understand what's wrong in our lives. Then it says it corrects us when we're wrong, and teaches us to do what is right. Why do we have to get taught? Do what is right because the world system teaches us right the wrong way okay that that little boy right there has to be taught how to do right he naturally knows how to do wrong doesn't he Amen. we all know how to do what's wrong nobody has to teach us you let him out of that you let him out of that right well, he's going to go for something that's not good for him right yeah, he's yes. not going to come down and pray and worship god is he? <laughs> no none of us do that and we still don't do it we have to be taught how to worship God. Amen? Amen? We don't know how to do it. But we know how to do things that are very unhealthy for us, don't we? Mm -hmm. Nobody has to teach us that. So that's why we need the Bible. To get us back on track to see what's right. And it tells us, it corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. And why does God use it? Look at verse 17. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work to honor God. Amen? Amen. So that's why this ministry is all about what? Learning and studying the Bible, right? Amen. And then what? Applying it to our lives. Amen? Amen? That's what this ministry is all about. And that's what any church, the core of any church should be. Unfortunately, that's not the way it is anymore. There are more gimmicks and entertainment out there than there is Scripture. Amen? Amen? And rituals. Instead of really learning the character of God and how we can use that in our daily lives, Right? And help other people get into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. All right. So that's why we do it. All right. Let us go to, um, we're going to continue with our study of Deuteronomy. And we're going to go to Deuteronomy 5 tonight. Now, I know we began in um, 5, but we're going to just stop from jump again because it's important that we keep the context of this, of this um, chapter, very important chapter. Very relevant chapter in today's age of Christianity. I really believe that the Old Testament has been neglected in Christianity because when you read the Old Testament, you develop a healthy fear of God. Yes. Amen. You, call, you just read the New Testament. Oh, Jesus loves everybody, and it's okay to just keep doing wrong and sinning. God just accepts us. Well, I don't know what God we're talking about, but God is a just God. And He still corrects us when we're wrong. And He still chastises us for sin. He wants us to repent and turn from it. Amen? Amen? doesn't want us to stay in sin. God's grace and mercy is not to keep sinning. It's to get us out of it. Amen? Amen. Let's, not get, let's not take the Bible out of context. And think, oh, I can do whatever I want because I'm going to heaven. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, but don't think there's no consequences for that. Amen? Amen. Okay, there still will be. And God holds us more accountable once we know the truth. Amen? All right, let's start in verse 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 5. Is everybody with me so far? Yes. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> Just imagine the head start that little boy has, right? Yeah. Ezra has right now. I, I, I didn't get any of this when I was a kid, right? I got the wrong teaching, right? Yeah. 
I didn't know who God was and how to follow him and how I could use him in my life. I had to go find out the hard way. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, well, well we, we've already paved the way so they don't have to go that way. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Teach them the truth from John. Yes. Okay, look at verse 1. The Ten Commandments for the Covenant Community. Moses called all the people of Israel together and said, Listen carefully, Israel. Now he's talking to us. Listen carefully, spiritual Israel, which we are. Hear the decrees and regulations I am giving you today so that you may learn them and obey them. Okay, first we have to learn them, and then God tells us to obey them. Okay, get an amen for that. Amen. There's no getting around it. You don't learn the scriptures so you don't obey them. You learn them so you can obey them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay, you need the power of Jesus Christ in our life and the Holy Spirit so we can obey Him. We couldn't obey Him before that. Now that we have Christ, we are without excuse. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. He stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord. For you were afraid of the fire and did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me, and I passed his words on to you. This is what he said. I am the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. And amen for that. Amen. All right, before we go on, let me just reiterate on that. This is really important. I want to say this again because we have to understand. The commandments are not done away with. The commandments are fulfilled. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the commandments. The Bible tells us, and Jesus tells us clearly, not one of His commandments will ever pass away. Amen? Uh -huh. The problem is, we don't understand. We Nobody could obey the commandments until Jesus came, and He obeyed them. What's the new law now? Uh -huh. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. That fulfills the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. That's all it was about. The commandments were given to show us what's wrong with us, that we can't obey them. Mm -hmm. In the flesh, we cannot obey God's commandments. And we all know that. We all want what we want when we want it. And we still do as Christians, right? We want all this in heaven too. God says, no, you have to die to yourself and come to me, and then I'm going to show you what freedom really is. Other than that, you're in slavery to sin. Remember, remember the, um, Jesus, uh, the Pharisee said, we've never been slaves to anybody. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Yeah. You can't stop. All of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. and there's not one person sitting in this room tonight can tell me that they don't sin anymore. There's only one sinless one, and it's Jesus. Yes. But now we have a choice. We do not have to obey the lust of our flesh any longer. Amen? Amen? God calls us to repentance so we can turn from that and have a new life with Him and set us free from ourselves and our sin nature. Amen? Which is the problem from junk. The problem isn't the world. The problem is the flesh. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Anybody knows in here yeah, how powerful their flesh is till they try to stop using it. To say no to it. To stop losing, to not want and their desires fulfilled anymore. Then you know how powerful it is to say no to it. Yeah. That's why we know we need a Savior. Like, amen? amen? So don't anybody sitting there think that they don't have to say no to it because the Bible calls us to. Say no to the flesh and yes to the Spirit. Amen? amen? And to follow and obey what the Bible tells us to do so we can live in freedom of that sin nature. And that's why the commandments were taught. Okay? The people had entered into a covenant with God. Listen up now. And Moses commanded them to hear, learn, and obey his regulations. Okay? Christians also have entered into a covenant with God through Jesus Christ. Okay? And should be responsive to what God expects. Okay? Moses' threefold command to the Israelites provides excellent advice for all of God's followers. Okay? Listening is absorbing and accepting information about God. I get an amen for that. Amen. First we have to hear it, okay? And absorbing it. Then we have to absorb and accept the information about God. Learning is understanding its meaning and implications. Obeying is putting it into action. 
putting into action all we have learned and understood. And then all three parts, which is the Trinity, right? Yes. Three parts, which is the Trinity, are essential to a growing relationship with God, right? We have to understand God is watching over us, have a healthy fear of Him, right? The Holy Spirit dwells within us to guide us as a compass to do what's right. And Jesus walks alongside of us to help us on the journey. Amen? Amen. When you realize wherever you go, you take Jesus with you, you start to think twice about the things that you're doing. That's why it's a growing relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. Knowing that when nobody else is around, He is. Not only is He not around, He's with you. You take Him wherever you go. That's why it's a healthy fear of God. Amen? Amen. You can't like hide and say, oh, nobody's around now. Jesus must be sleeping. Yes. Oh, God's not watching me right now when I commit this sin. And guess what? Oh, I can do it because God loves me and His grace covers it. Hello? What Bible do you read it? His grace doesn't cover sin. His grace, what? Helps us get out of sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I mean, can, I, can I get a double amen for that? Please. Amen. Amen. Stop abusing God's grace and thinking it's freedom to live sinful. And if you were taught that, you have to unlearn it. Because it's false doctrine. Amen. It's false teaching. God's grace is not to keep sinning. God's grace is us to stop sinning. Amen? Amen. Amen? And if you don't stop sinning, you will die in your sin even after you get saved. Amen? Yes. Amen. Your sin, you will suffer down here. Choose to sin. Choose to suffer. Amen? Amen. Don't think you're going to live a blessed life and God is hearing your prayers when you're living your own way. Mm -hmm. Again, amen for that? Amen. Amen. Let's get real with God. And if you don't want to do it His way, you don't have to. He never takes away our free will, but there are consequences. Ignorance is not bliss anymore for a believer. Mm -hmm. We know the truth and the truth that sets us free. Amen? And if you want to continue to live in sin, you will die in your sin, Jesus said. Amen? Amen. So He tells us to come up out of that. We know sin isn't healthy. It doesn't do anything but destroy it. Okay? All three, three essential parts. Okay, it's, it's, okay, let's talk about... Let's keep going now. Let's go to verse 7. It says, You must not have any other God but me. And then in verse 8, it says, You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I... The Lord your God am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. And look what he says here. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. What is he talking about? Your lifestyle carries down through your whole family tree. Yes. The way you live and what you do directly affect your children, and affects their children and their children's children. That's what he's saying. It's not something that's hereditary. It's the way we live and the way we act. Amen? Amen? That's what he's talking about. And he's telling us to stop doing that. Let's break that cycle so you don't have to live that way anymore. Because you're serving yourself, which you are um, God unto yourself. Amen? Amen? Don't think that your decisions don't affect everybody else in your family. Not only them, but it affects your family in church too. Yes. Amen? Amen. People think they can just get off the hook by saying, oh, we had nothing to do with it. No, your kids are the way they are because of you. Yes. Don't ever make a mistake about that. It's the parents. Yes. And I believe it because I know the things my kids, that my kids have in them that I don't like is me. Yes. I see it in them. I can't openly tell them that, but I see what I created you know, by the things that I did not knowing that I was doing that. Ignorance. Is I didn't know any better. Now I know. So I'm careful with everything I say now in front of them and do with them. Amen? Amen. Because they are looking and they're watching. Yeah. You can't tell the kid not to smoke with a cigarette hanging out of your mouth. You can't tell the kid not to swear when everything that comes out of your mouth is a swear word. You can't tell the kid to be faithful when you're unfaithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. It doesn't work. So just remember that when you look around and see your kids, when you make decisions, they hear it and they see it and they become 
Amen. That's why he says you better get with Jesus because you need a new life. <laughs> Amen. And if you can't admit that, I feel bad for you. But then there's a cure. Who's the cure? Jesus in the words of God. He says, you know what? It's okay. You made a lot of mistakes. It's all right. I'm not holding that against you. But now I'm going to show you a new way. And it's up to the parents to find that new way. But unfortunately, America has lost connection with church. They don't think that they need church in their life anymore. Or Jesus. We can just do it our way. Um, I created me. I can handle me. If you think you know more than the guy who created you, you are just one ignorant, prideful person. Get any amen for that? Yeah. This church is about change. And to see what's wrong with our lives so we can do that. Amen? So we can actually use Jesus to help us. Can get any amen for that? Yeah. Okay. Now let me just explain what a God is, another God. Okay? A God or an idol is whatever people use as a driving force in their lives. Okay? In their lives. Some people literally worship other gods, right? by joining cults or strange religions. In a more subtle way though, many of us worship other gods by building our lives around something other than the one true God. If your greatest desire for, is for popularity, power, or money, you are devoting yourself to something other than God. Can I get an amen to that? And there's Christians that are like that, right? They devote themselves to what? Popularity, I want to be liked by everybody. Power, money, that is a false God. And you are devoting yourself to something other than God. To put God first, let's say, come on, you want to put God first? I'm going to give you a little how to do that, okay? How many of us want to put God first in our lives? That's why we're here, right? It's a fight, though, isn't it? Yes. It's a fight. One, recognize what has taken his place in your life. Listen now, recognize what it is, renounce this substitute God as unworthy of your devotion. Three, ask God for forgiveness. Four, restructure your priorities so that love for God is the motive for everything you do. And get an amen for that. Amen. Five, examine yourself daily to be sure you are giving God first place. What do we have to do? Examine ourselves to see where we're at today, not other people. Okay? We have to examine our own hearts. Where am I with this situation? Why am I so distant from God? Why am I not putting Him first? Is it my lack of faith? Or maybe I just don't believe Him? Maybe I think I know more than God. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. And that's just the height of arrogance. Now let me just ask you, let me just say this. How would you feel if you if someone took a picture of you, framed it, and stared at it a lot? <laughs> right? Showed it to others, but completely ignored the real you. God does not want to be treated this way either, okay? He doesn't want to get treated that way. He wants a genuine relationship with us, not a mere ritual. He wants us to know him. God knows that if we put anything other than Him at the center of our lives, we will not reach our full potential and become all that He wants us to be. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Amen. So God knows better than we do. So, let me ask you this. How many of us, when you get up every morning, examine yourself and say, where am I today? How am I acting? How am I living? How am I behaving? Or are you like, look at the way they're living. Look at the way they're behaving. I'm better than they are. Who are you putting, who are you comparing yourself to? Put yourself against Jesus Christ, and you will be far short of anything. Amen? Amen. None of us, everybody can be better than someone else. But none of us are as good as Jesus is. So that puts us all in the same boat now, doesn't it? So, I happen to always examine where I'm at, because that, if anything happens, if I start drifting from God, guess what else will drift? It's a whole ministry. Yeah. I can do it subtly, and everybody will drift to another goal, instead of the Word of God. Towards what? 
getting built, building, getting better this, getting better that. Instead of getting a better relationship with Jesus, which is up front the most important thing in a believer's life. Amen? Amen. And that's the most important thing to me, is to get close and personal with my Savior so I can help you get close and personal to your Savior. Amen? Amen. And that's why we do this. Amen. It's the truth that sets us free. If you want to believe a lie, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Because it's the truth that we teach that the Word of God. These aren't my words. These are God's words. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. amen. We don't want to twist the Scriptures to our own destruction. And people do. How many places take the Bible out of context? Yeah. Do we do that here? No, because no, I tell you to read it from Genesis to Revelation. So you know if I'm taking it out of context. Mm -hmm. right? You're like a Berean. You make sure that what I'm teaching is correct. Because I want you to know. Because I want to know if the devil's got me. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen for that? Mm -hmm. Because he's very subtle. We can't see it. That's why we have to stay close to each other and close to what? The words of God. Amen? Not the people to the words of God. All right. We are familiar. Okay, let me just... Let's just keep going. Let's just keep reading. Let's keep reading some of these commandments. Look what it says in verse 11. Oh, no, yeah. I, well, no, let me, no, where did I stop? Oh, let's go back to now. And we'll keep going. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Amen. Listen, when you get into a relationship of good godly parents, of studying the Bible and learning his ways, it gets passed down through the generations of your children, and guess what? They're godly and have good character. And that's what makes the world a better place. Amen? Amen? It all starts with the parents. We have to do that so if we obey God, so then the generations that come up do the same thing. Amen? Because he's following them. And we're following God. Amen? See, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But if you're not in church, not reading the Bible, how can you tell me that you're walking with the Lord? Mm -hmm. You can't. Walking with the Lord is walking with His Word. Amen? Right. Now look at verse 11. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse His name. Now, let me just reiterate before we keep going. We are familiar with the sin to be avoided in this commandment. That we should not misuse the name of the Lord by saying it in an empty or worthless way. Amen? Mm -hmm. But there is also a good work that is commanded to use God's name to praise Him and to and ascribe to Him glory. This is the opposite of misusing His name. Amen? While you might be able to keep yourself from swearing, how have you done in finding time to praise God and honor His name? Amen? Amen. How many of us, honestly, oh, it's so hard to find time. It's so hard to find time to go to church. It's so hard to find time to read the Bible. It's so hard. I have to do all these other things. Do you realize... It's only an hour to come to church. It's only 15 to 20 minutes of reading scripture out of the whole day. And you're telling me that you can't find time to read a book that your creator who wants to save you and love you and give you a better life. We go to everything else but him. We put God last. And we know it. And God says, I'm going to have my way with you and I will get first place in your heart sooner or later. Amen? You can do it by the eye of my word or by the or the rock either way God's going to have his way with you you can't get away with it and you better thank God that you can't get away with it because he never gives up on us 
Anybody that knows that has walked away from God that is a genuine believer cannot stay away. A genuine believer has the Holy Spirit in them. There's no way they can stay away from God. Somebody who's not a believer can walk away from this and never come back without any problem. That's how you know if you're saved or not. That's how you know. Anybody can say, I believe that Jesus is Lord. Even the devil knows that. You become what you believe. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. You believe that you're the children of God. You will become the children of God one way or another because the Holy Spirit will never let go of you. You thank God for that. Amen? amen. Now you have to ask yourself, if it's so easy for me to let go of God, do I really believe it? The Bible says the human heart is wicked and deceitful above all else. Who can really know it? So, what's the evidence of salvation? A changed life. You want to know if you're saved or not? Look at your life. Has it changed since you've known God? Has your life transformed since you heard about God? If it has, then you know that you're saved. If it hasn't, you say, I probably just don't believe it. I probably not. That's a good thing, though. Because if it, there's always time say, you know what, i got to get serious with God. I don't even realize it if I'm saying that. I can't even tell. You go out there now, can you tell a believer from an unbeliever? Very hard to tell, right? But somebody that's truly saved, you'll be able to tell. You'll be able to tell. And what they do, what they say, and how they live. Like I said before, we become believers. We don't just instantly be believers, right? We become believers, right? At first, we don't believe it. We need to get the we need to get the facts first before we believe or trust anybody, right? right. Believing is one thing; trusting is another. Yes. Right? right. I believe when I get in my car that it's going to stop. Then I got to trust it and turn the key, and make sure it does. Amen. Right. You got to trust it. You got to trust God with your life. You ask Him to give Him parts of your life. Amen. Say, so I'm going to give my relationship to God because I can't fix it. I'm going to give my my job to God because I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm not God. I'm, whoever put, what God puts above me, I'm going to honor them like they were Jesus. I'm going to put them first in my life. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. And if I can't tell them about Jesus, the next best thing is to what? Act like them. So they will see a difference in you. Other than that, don't tell me that you have salvation. If you're still living in your sin nature, what are you saved from? If your faith hasn't changed you, your faith hasn't saved you. Can I get an amen for that? Yeah. Really, let's be real here. What do we come to, what do we need a savior for if there's nothing wrong with us? Right? right. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're making some groundwork here. Now it says. Verse 12, observe the Sabbath. This is one taken way out of proportion. Remember? Okay. Am I good? No Does everybody hear me so far here? Listen, these are God's words. I hope, if you're not right, that you're getting convicted right now and not getting bitter. Because if you're getting bitter, God is going to have a field day with you, and the devil is going to jump all over you and have a field day with you. So you better get better yeah. before you get bitter. Yeah. That's just a fair warning for someone that's been through the bitterness part of this journey. You want to get bitter with God, go ahead. It's only going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt God. And if you want to say, well, those words were written by men, well, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because the written word becomes the living word. Yeah. Every word that's in that Bible, you believe it because the Holy Spirit is in you. If you don't believe it, it's because you don't have it. Yeah. Now look what it says in verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys and other livestock, 
in any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt. Or why did it say you were once slaves to Egypt? Why? Because the world doesn't take any rest. Okay? Right now we're slaves to the world when you don't get rest on seven days. You do it seven days straight. Back when I was growing up as a kid, Sunday was a day of rest. Nothing was open. Right now, <clears throat> the world is just like Egypt. Go, 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 go. Sunday's just another day, and it's not a day of rest. But a believer, it should be a day of rest. Now, does that mean I can't, like, do anything? No, see, everybody gets it out of context. All of us need to rest. How many of us are burnt out? Come on, though. Because they keep going, 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 going. And don't just take a break. Sunday comes. You sit around for five minutes, you feel like you're unproductive. So I can, I'm can i good for five minutes and then i got to get up and do something, right? Yeah. But God says, no, it's a day to honor me. It's a good day to get with my family, read the Word, have a nice meal, and, get, and read the Word of God. That's why they have church on Sundays, by the way, because they figured that would stop people, right? But it didn't. Actually, the Sabbath was on a Saturday. It was a day of rest. But all the Bible is trying to say is, listen, stop, relax, take a break. You have, imagine spending a whole day with God. That's what he wants you to do. Stop, stop taking, stop. Have it spending a day with the world and spend a day with God. Can we do it? How hard is that to do? Yeah. Oh, I can read some scriptures, right? Oh, well. But does that mean like, oh, I just got to pray all day long? See, these people get so whacked out with all this stuff. You know, that means you got to pray all day, get on your knees, and that's it. No, just have God circulate in your mind all day. Just give Him some give him some time. Give God some time. He's the one that gave you the opportunity to do everything else for six days. Amen. You say, oh, on the seventh day, just yeah. take some time. Yeah. For me, the one who gave it all to you. Amen. And that's why he says, I'll have no other gods before me. It's for my benefit. And people have a problem. Oh, am I going to go to church? I'm going to get up? I'm gonna yes. go. It's like, really? He's the one that gave you the opportunity to do everything you have. And you can't give him an hour? Think about it. I hope I'm getting through to everybody tonight. Amen? Yes. Because I give him my whole life. And my life is nothing's taken from me. My life is better than it ever has been. Does it have problems? Yes, but I'm stable. Yeah. I'm stable through all the problems and everything else that's going on. I'm still stable because I know that I put him first. And he says, that's okay, John. I know you. He didn't say, I'm going to just make everything perfect. He says, I'm going to give you the ability to handle it right. Mm -hmm. So people can see Jesus in you. Yeah. Do I, am I perfect? No. My wife will tell you I'm not perfect. <laughs> But she knows that I want to be. I want to be like Jesus. That's a goal in my life. I want to be calm and serene and not always condemning and harsh and judgmental on people and myself. Amen. How many of us are hard on ourselves still? Like Jesus didn't do enough for you, right? At the cross. So let me punish myself some more for doing wrong. It's like saying, Jesus, you didn't do enough for me. i got to suffer some more enough. Really? And you've been taught well here. Mm -hmm. All of us know that, right? We know that we're forgiven. Why do we still do it? Because it ha repetition is the key to what? Pretension. Why do I always repeat that? Because we can't, we can't get it. We can't digest it. Even though we know it, we just can't get it. So I have to keep what? Reminding you. Yeah. You're saved. Relax. Your sins are not holding against you. Why are you holding them against yourself? Why are you holding them against other people? You have no right to hold anything against anybody. Because he forgave you of everything. If there's resentments and bitterness in you, Jesus can't shine. He has to free us from the bondage of that. Amen? You're right. You're getting some groundwork here, right? Think about it. You know, Sunday's an awesome day. I used to like Sundays when I was a kid. Because everybody sit at the table. They couldn't even get gas. The gas stations were closed. All the stores were closed. There was nothing else to do but stay with family. Now, 
all family gatherings until like five o'clock, then all the stores are open again, right? Not even. Like Thanksgiving, you get together at Thanksgiving. Oh, I can't wait for Black Friday. Oh, wait, there's no more Black Friday. It's Black Thursday now. <laughs> They didn't even get through Thanksgiving yet, and they're already thinking, oh, to the TV, I gotta go wait in line for it. <laughs> it's crazy. But we can't give God an hour. No, we can't give him an hour. Why ain't anybody lining up to come to church? Oh, because that's not satisfying me. I need something for me. I don't want to do something for him. The one who created me, oh no, I don't have time for that. And God says, I have no other gods before me. And we put all the gods before him all the time. Let's be real. And he's in the process of what? Breaking that out of us. Yeah. And thank God he does. I'm glad he's breaking it out of me. Because I'm tired. I'm like, I'm tired of trying to get something from the world. Can't get nothing. Up. Nothing satisfies you. Yeah. Nothing does. You get enough money, you get enough vacations. You, get, you know, you go here. You go somewhere else, oh wow, there's trees and water. Oh nice. Oh, oh, oh there's a mountain. Oh good, Vermont. Oh, the Caribbean, oh there's water and a beach. Wow. So exciting. Wherever you go, it's all the same. Right? Trees, mountains, water, and driving. And if that's gonna be the center of my life, oh I just want to see the world. There's a better one coming. This world cannot satisfy me. Amen. Amen? This world cannot. I don't care how many vacations I go on. Amen? Yeah. It can't do it. I don't have any time to do whatever. It's never enough. Yeah. So I decided one thing. I'm going to get hooked on Jesus instead. Amen. Because let me tell you something. It's a better place and it's a better result. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do something good. To make a change in this world, amen? amen. It all starts with me. It all starts with you. That's how we build this kingdom. How do you think God wants us to build this kingdom out here? One believer at a time, right? Yeah. He wants quality believers, not a quantity of them. And that's what we're building here. His church, right? All right. Let's just let's just keep going. Here. Honor your father and mother. as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not commit murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. None of us can do that. Can we? Guess what? You know what comes? You know what comes all that? Uh, love does no wrong to anyone. That's why it fulfills all the commandments. Right? First Corinthians 13, keep no record of being wrong. When you tell somebody you love them, you're not holding anything against them. You always want what's good for them. You know that quick. Love you. Love you. Oh, I love you. Empty. Then the next thing you know, you're fighting with them. Right? <laughs> love you. <laughs> I love you, but I can't take what you're doing. <laughs> Had enough of you. I can't do this. I can't do this. Oh, well, the bowels were better for worse, the richer for more, sickness and health, the death was part. Remember, you made them before God. You didn't say because we don't, you know, we don't smell good anymore, or we don't look good anymore, or we don't sleep, or, or you know, you know what I'm talking about. Gravity caught up with us. I need something fresh. No, that wasn't in the bombs, remember? <laughs> you get, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore. <laughs> I didn't know there was a difference. The Bible doesn't make a distinction like that. Love is a choice, by the way. Five, six, seven years with that same person, you've got to choose to love them. Because you know, every, every, Everything that you don't like about them, <laughs> that you never knew about them, is coming out over time. Yes. Amen? Amen. And you have to make a choice. I still love that. Can <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get an amen for that? <laughs> the warm, fuzzy feelings are long gone. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. When you first meet somebody, oh, I was on the phone, can't wait to see you. 
know, all day butterflies and thinking? Hello, do you really think that's going to last for 30 years? You say, I'm not in love with you anymore? Really? Let's be real and honest about what love really is. Love is about denying yourself for the benefit of others. It's called charity. Love in action. The world's love is like, oh, Oh, you just don't get along anymore. Time to break up. See you later. <laughs> when do everybody get when does everybody get along all the time? <laughs> to even make a statement like that. Irreconcilable differences. Yeah, men are from Venus, women are from Mars. Yeah, you already know that. Is that in the clause? <laughs> but we want God in our marriage. I want, to, I want to get married by a priest or a pastor. I want God involved in this. Well, let's remember when you say that, that he is involved with that, and he doesn't just say, oh, it's okay. No, there's, there's stipulations in the Bible that would give us the ability to, to separate. We know what them are. Same thing with church. Not, what about our family here? Jesus says we're married to him now. Remember? Mm -hmm. He's the bride. No matter what's going on. I love him. You love, right? And he says, well, you love your wife the same way you love me. And you'll see how everything falls into place. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the essence of the whole body. That's the essence of the whole ministry. Amen? But so learn how to do that. And have the Holy Spirit give us the opportunity to actually fulfill it. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to stop here for now. When we get back together, we'll continue with verse 22. Thank you for letting me share that with you. I hope we have something to rule around on this, you know? Well, God's commandments. He loves us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. You. Thank you for letting me be truthful.